Hello, I'm Kira Milwitargrey. And I'm Tom DePreston. And we're here today to answer some quick fire questions about our joint collaboration, Julia and the Shark. So uh, first, what would you say Julia and the Shark is about? So in a nutshell, Julia and the Shark is sort of clues in the title. It's about a girl called Julia who goes up to a tiny island in the Shetlands with her family for the summer. Her dad's there to program a lighthouse to make it work automatically and her mum is there on a quest to find the elusive green shark, an ancient animal that Julia slowly becomes more and more obsessed with. Um, so I suppose we should talk about what inspired us to tell this story together. Well, I think the story found us really. I think from the moment the shark kind of arrived, we knew that this was a story in a world that couldn't be told just with words. And so therefore that it was something that we could work on together where words and image would be functioning together. And that it felt like everything about this story required that dialogue between the two. Um, so yeah, it's really a story that found us. And um, what, would, okay, what would you say were the best and the worst bits about working together? Uh, I'll do the best bits, you can do the worst. So the best bits about working together is, you know, we do quite like spending time together. Um, we do quite enjoy each other's company. And also we really are very involved in each other's work anyway. We always talk through ideas for paintings and ideas for stories. So it felt like a natural next step to create this incredible object together. So I think the best part was actually holding it in our hands. It's such a beautiful book and we can't wait for readers to hold it too. I can't actually think of worst oh, bits. I feel on. like there must have been some, but the worst bit was, was maybe it finishing. <laughs> but I'll, I'll yeah. go. Okay. The worst bit about working together is when you do live together and you do spend all your time talking about the same thing, I think sometimes you can become a little too obsessed and there sort of isn't a world outside the story. So I think maybe the worst bit was we became a bit boring to everyone except each other. Oh, I quite liked that, that we became obsessed with it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think each other's contribution adds to your own work? So I think Kieran writes with a kind of incredible lyricism and poetry. And so the moment I read the first full draft of the text, there was this whole texture there that felt like I almost immediately could just see the entire visual world of the book. It was just kind of in the gaps between the words. And so, yeah, I suppose it's the way that you conjure whole, whole worlds and weather systems from your words. I think similarly, what I loved was when I felt, often when I come to a really dramatic bit in a story, there's sort of, it does feel like language can't quite reach it. And working with Tom, working with his artwork, you know, there are bits in this story where the pictures just completely take over. And it was really liberating to be, to know that we weren't relying just solely on my words to take us there. You know, we created this whole sort of immersive world together, which is really exciting. And what do you think makes the Greenland shark a fascinating subject? What doesn't make the Greenland shark a fascinating subject? So I could go on and on about this, but the Greenland shark is essentially one of the strangest, most incredible animals you will ever hear about. The oldest one they've actually proven um, was over 400 years old. So that was a shark that was alive, uh, you know, when Mozart was composing his incredible music. And it's just so amazing to me that something like that can live that long. And the reason it lives so long is because it grows really, really slowly. It grows a bit like a tree. Um, and often they date sharks ages by their bones they literally grow rings like a tree but the greenland shark you can't do that because their bones are so soft so they date them they age them by taking crystals from their eyes and um, finding out sort of the microbes in there how old they are and that's how they dated the 400 year old greenland shark but they think they can probably live to about 800 years old i think as well it was it was fascinating that the greenland shark became a metaphor almost immediately when we started this project, this kind of idea of a this animal living in the depths of the ocean, um, ancient, travelling blind through these dark spaces, was so obviously this kind of incredible metaphor for various things that are central to the book, like mental health struggles, um, some of the kind of other 
um, issues to do with nature that are central to the book as well. And it felt like the shark was, as well as being this kind of remarkable animal in its own right, could also hold all these other meanings within it. What do we hope readers will take from the book? Do you want to go first? I'll go. So I, I think, I was going to say growing up, but also now, like books for me are these remarkable things that you, you know, you can be in the privacy of your own home, but then you can fall into these whole other worlds. They're, they're if you like, the original immersive experience. Um, we wanted to make a book really that in the way that the words and image and the design work together, felt like books you could fall into that, you know, you'd find that world kind of coming out of the pages and surrounding you. So we hope we've achieved that. I hope readers take a lot of wonder for the natural world, which is what we've put into it. I hope they take a sense of adventure and of their own importance in the world. And most of all, I hope they take hope. You know, this really is a hopeful story and about how often the smallest people can make the biggest difference.